So Drew, could you compare and contrast what you're seeing globally uh, with respect to five or ten ten deployments? Okay. Um, the North American market has been quite slow to adopt remote radio head technology, but now, again, with geography and with the amount of people based in the country, the deployments are huge. But what we're finding is because a lot of the um, operators don't actually own the real estate that they're putting the product up on, a lot of the solutions that we're seeing out here are what we call boxless solutions. So instead of having a, um, a mass-mounted box that distributes the fiber and the power, we actually, as you can see here, we do it within this can and we actually use boxless solutions. Whereas in the European markets, for instance, a lot of the operators, they will own the towers. So actually having all the excess real estate up there is not a big problem to them. However, big boxes and that are causing issues. So now we're starting to see a lot of these hybrid style solutions are becoming more and more important. We also do very similar solutions that, uh, that have bundled fiber and bundled power, but again, we do those without a box. So we have a product that has a compact divider that breaks out the fiber um, without the need for a mass mount box. And it's all done outdoor rated, IP67 rated, very, very um, strong. And it means that what you can do is deploy a multiple radio system without the need for boxes. Um, the other big driver we're seeing as well is, is the fact that you know the biggest cost in these solutions can be the copper, um, where some operators, predominantly in Europe, uh, have been ripping down old 2G systems. They're left with the uh, corrugated um, cabling going up the mast, the old RF cabling. And we have a system that allows us to reuse the, that corrugated cable as a power source for the remote radio heads. And so that's a big driver in the European markets as well. And then earlier you talked about simply the number of radios yep. that are going on antennas, as many as 18. Yep. You talk a little bit about the drivers for um that type, antenna, that type of antenna growth. Okay, I mean, so again, if we look at, say, for instance, in the North America market here, it's about the number of frequencies that you guys are using and number of systems you're using, CDMA, UMTS, um, you know, 700 A, B, and C, and LTE coming out on that. So that's driving lots of radios because you have a radio per um, solution, if you like. But the other big driver as well now is capacity. Um, we're seeing um, a lot of the opcos where they're going away from three sector uh, installations to go into six sector installations. So they're halving the, the beam width, if you like, of their sectors because they have so much capacity going through those cell sites. And every time you do that, typically that means more radios going up there. So again, by decreasing the amount of cables you have running up the mast means that you can have a simpler and more cost-effective install in doing that.